Trigonometry lesson four. Determine the length using sine and cosine. Example number one, use sine and cosine to find the length of a leg, a side that's other than the hypotenuse. So we are determining the value of x. When I observe this triangle, I recognize that it's a right triangle with sides and angles. Therefore, I'm pretty sure I can use trigonometry on it. So my first step is to identify what is the angle that I'm working from? That is 56 degrees. From here, I now need to identify the sides that I'm using. 21 is the hypotenuse because it is across from the right angle. X is the opposite because it's across from the angle that I'm working with. So now which ratio has O and H in it? Well, that would be so. Unpacking that means that I am looking at sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. I now fill in the values that I've got. I know that theta, or the angle I'm looking from, is 56, so I fill in 56 for theta. I know my opposite is x, so I replace my numerator with x, and my hypotenuse is 21. So I replace my denominator with 21. Now, I need to get x alone. So how do I get rid of 21? Well, x is being divided by 21. So to get rid of it, I would multiply both sides by 21. This allows the 21s on the right-hand side to cancel, leaving me with x is equal to 21 multiplied by the sine of 56. I'm now ready to punch this into my calculator. Don't forget, we're going to punch it in as 21 multiplied by the sine of 56 equals. Now that's if you have an on screen. If you have a non screen, you're going to do that in a reverse order. You're going to go 21 multiplied by 56 sine equals. The answer is 17.4, don't forget your units, centimeters. All right, you should have tried this example on your own. Number two, using sine and cosine to find the length of a leg, other than the hypotenuse. So, again, I look at my triangle. It's a right triangle mixed with angles and sides. So I'm pretty sure I can use trigonometry. So my first step is to identify the angle I'm working from. That is 19 degrees. Next, I need to identify my sides. What do I know? x is beside 19 degrees, which makes it the adjacent. 15 is across from the right angle, which makes it the hypotenuse. Now, which ratio should I use? Well, I know I've got A and I've got H. Which ratio has A and H in it? That would be Ka or cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, I'm going to substitute in the values that I've got. Well, I've got 19 degrees, so I'm going to replace theta with 19 degrees. I know that adjacent is x, so I'm going to replace adjacent with x. And finally, 15 is my hypotenuse, so I'm going to replace my denominator with 15. Now again, I want to get x alone or isolate the variable. So how do I get rid of 15? Well, x is being divided by 15, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 15. The 15s on the right-hand side will now cancel each other out, leaving me with x is equal to 15 multiplied by cos of 19 degrees. I'm now ready to punch this into my calculator. And again, with an on-screen on -screen calculator, you would punch in 15 multiplied by the cos of 19 degrees equals, and you should get an answer of 14.2, don't forget your units of feet. Example three, using sine or cosine to find the length of the hypotenuse or the denominator. This is usually quite a bit more difficult because it involves an extra step. So when I look at the triangle, it says determine the value of x. I recognize that we have an angle and we're working with two sides. 
This usually indicates trigonometry is a possible option. So my first step is to identify what is the angle I'm looking from. That is 65 degrees. Now, from here, I can identify what sides I'm going to be using. I'm going to work with 11 kilometers, which is beside 65 degrees. Therefore, it's the adjacent. I'm working with X, which is across from the right angle. Therefore, it would be the hypotenuse. So which ratio uses A and H? Well, that would be ka, or cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So my next step is to fill in the values that I've got. I know that my angle is 65 degrees, so I replace theta with 65. I know my adjacent is 11, so I replace my numerator with 11. And finally, my hypotenuse is going to be x, so I replace my denominator with x. Now, notice x is in the denominator, which means we can never isolate the variable as long as it stays in the denominator. So what do we do? We get rid of it from the denominator by multiplying both sides by x. This allows the x's on the right-hand side to cancel, giving me x multiplied by the cos of 65 degrees equals 11. I now need to get x alone or isolated. So how do I get rid of cos of 65? Well, x is being multiplied by cos of 65, so I am going to divide both sides by cos of 65. This allows the cos of 65s to cancel on the left-hand side, leaving me with x is equal to 11 divided by the cos of 65. I now am ready to punch this into my calculator. So I would punch in on an on-screen on calculator, 11 divided by the cos of 65 equals, giving me an answer of x is equal to 26. Don't forget your units. So my answer is x is equal to 26 kilometers. Word problem. Jimmy is flying a plane at an elevation of 4,200 meters. If the angle of depression from the plane to the base of the airport tower is 11 degrees, how far is the plane from the tower? Now, the hardest part of this question is the fact that it uses something called angle of depression, which is the angle going down from horizontal. Now, just like all word problems, if you can draw a picture, you probably are best to. So what do we know? We know Jimmy is flying a plane. That's a nice plane. And he is flying at an elevation of 4,200 meters. Elevation means a height above the ground. He is flying towards an airport tower. And the question wants to know how far is the plane from the tower. So that's going to be my unknown. I also know that we are dealing with the angle of depression. So I draw a horizontal line from the plane. And I know that the angle going down from the horizontal line to the, to the tower is 11 degrees. I also know that, again, my unknown is x or the distance from the plane to the tower. Now, what I should notice is that if the ground is a uniform height, that this is going to form a right triangle. Now, I also notice that if I drew a line horizontally on the, on the other side, I would have an identical right triangle to the original in a different orientation. This allows me to do different possible ways of solving this problem. Now, I notice that my 11 degrees is on a different triangle than 4200 meters. This makes it very difficult to solve. But I also notice that if I, my ele elevation goes straight up and my horizontal line is straight across, this forms a right angle. I can use this to figure out the angle on the same triangle is 4,200 meters. What do I know? A right angle is 90 degrees. So to find my missing angle, I would just have to subtract 11 from 90 degrees, giving me 79 degrees. Now, on the same triangle, I have an angle and I'm working with two sides. So 
I think I can use trigonometry here. I just need to identify my sides that I'm working with. So in order to do that, I need to know the angle I'm working from. That is 79 degrees. I identify 4200 as my adjacent because it is beside 79. I identify X as my hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle. So what ratio uses A and H? Well, that would be ka or cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. I'm now ready to substitute in my values. I know that the angle on this triangle is 79 degrees. I know that the adjacent is 4200 and I know that my hypotenuse is my unknown. Now again this creates problems because x is in the denominator which means we can never isolate it as long as it's in the denominator. So we're going to have to remove it from the denominator. How do we get rid of a denominator? We multiply both sides by the denominator. So I multiply both sides by x. This allows the x's to cancel each other out leaving me with x multiplied by the cos of 79 is equal to 4200. Again, x is not isolated, so I've got to get rid of cos of 79. How do I do this? Well, x is being multiplied by cos of 79, so I'm going to divide both sides by the cos of 79 degrees. This means that cos of 79 and cos of 79 are going to cancel. Therefore, x is now isolated, and on the other side I've got 4200 divided by the cos of 79 degrees. I now punch this into my calculator. On an on-screen calculator, I would punch this in as 4200 divided by the cos of 79 degrees, giving me an answer of 22,011.5 meters. Don't forget, this is a word problem, therefore it needs a word answer. The plane is 22,011.5 meters from the base of the tower. Now you don't have to go to one decimal place because there was no instructions on the level of accuracy.